Have you ever found yourself wondering why some people seem to drain your energy, leaving you feeling depleted and frustrated? Or perhaps you've pondered how recognizing certain traits in individuals can guide us towards more meaningful and fulfilling relationships. And in the maze of modern interpersonal dynamics, have you thought about what ancient wisdom might offer us in navigating these complex interactions? If these questions stir something within you, you're in the right place. In today's journey on our channel, Wisdom in Real Life, we delve deep into the heart of human behavior, guided by the timeless teachings of Buddhism. Our exploration is not just about identifying those around us who may not deserve our trust and respect. It's about understanding, growth, and the potential for transformation, both in ourselves and in our relationships. As we unveil the masks that people wear, from the manipulative individual to the empathy-lacking individual, we'll discover not just how to protect our peace, but also how to foster genuine connections based on compassion, understanding, and mutual respect. But why is this exploration essential? In our interconnected world, the quality of our relationships determines the richness of our lives. Through mindful observation and introspection, we can learn to navigate our social landscapes with wisdom, discerning who we allow into our inner circle and how we choose to interact with the world around us. This wisdom doesn't just change how we see others, it transforms how we see ourselves, encouraging a journey of self-discovery and personal growth. So, as we embark on this exploration together, I invite you to stay with us until the end of this video not just for the insights that might shift your perspective or the stories that touch your heart, but for the practical guidance that can apply in your daily life. And if you find value in what we share, don't forget to like, subscribe, and become a part of our Wisdom in Real Life community. Here, we're not just watching life pass by, we're engaging with it, learning from it, and growing with it. Let's dive in, shall we? 1. The Manipulative Individual Navigating our interactions with others, we sometimes encounter those who seem to sway decisions and actions to their favor, subtly or otherwise. These individuals, adept at manipulation, make it essential for us to recognize such behaviors. This understanding isn't just for our protection. It's about preserving the genuine connections we cherish. Manipulative behavior can be as simple as someone nudging us towards a decision that doesn't sit right with use to more direct actions that corner us into uncomfortable situations. Spotting these behaviors early is crucial. It's a skill that, interestingly, ties back to ancient Buddhist teachings about understanding people's intentions. By being mindful of what drives people's actions, we can peel back layers to reveal the truth behind their words and deeds. So, how do we shield ourselves from being unduly influenced while maintaining open and honest relationships. Communication is key. When we communicate clearly and openly, it becomes difficult for manipulation to find its way through. This doesn't mean viewing every interaction with suspicion. Rather, it's about engaging with a level of awareness that respects our feelings and hones our intuition. Addressing manipulation isn't solely about guarding ourselves against others. It's equally about empathy and understanding. Often, those who manipulate are driven by their own insecurities or unmet needs. Buddhist principles guide us to approach such individuals with compassion, aiming to understand them without falling prey to their tactics. This compassionate stance doesn't excuse manipulative actions, but rather changes how we respond to them. Being mindful makes us aware of our reactions and helps us see the true intentions of others. This awareness acts like a shield protecting us from the negative impacts of manipulation and guiding us towards healthier interactions. It also helps us rebuild trust in others and ourselves, reinforcing our inner strength. Moreover, compassion involves action. It calls us to reflect on our behavior. Are there times when we, perhaps unknowingly, sway situations for our benefit? This self-reflection isn't about self-criticism, but growth aligning our actions more closely with our values. The support of a community is invaluable in this journey. It offers perspective and strength 
when dealing with manipulative behavior, fostering an environment where honest communication and genuine intentions can flourish. Within this supportive network, we're reminded of our resilience, encouraged to stay true to our path and to cultivate spaces where clarity and sincerity are the norms. By embracing these teachings, we not only protect ourselves, but also contribute to creating a world that values honesty and integrity. We learn to communicate better, understand the fears driving manipulation, and respond with wisdom and kindness. This journey isn't about avoiding challenging individuals, but about engaging with them in ways that foster understanding and positive change. Through the wisdom of Buddhism, applied to our contemporary lives, we uncover the strength to turn manipulative tendencies into opportunities for personal growth and deeper connections. In doing so, we pave the way for relationships that are not just authentic, but also deeply meaningful, grounded in mutual respect and trust. It's through these lessons of mindfulness, compassion, and understanding that we navigate the complexities of human behavior, transforming potential conflicts into chances for growth and connection. This narrative around the manipulative individual seeks to offer a gentle guide on recognizing and dealing with manipulation. Drawing from Buddhist teachings, it aims to enrich our interactions, turning challenges into opportunities for building stronger, more genuine connections. 2. Criticizing Gossip Monger Navigating social landscapes, we often encounter individuals who thrive on criticism and gossip. These gossip mongers can subtly influence the atmosphere around us, turning what should be supportive communities into spaces of negativity. Understanding how to handle such situations can significantly impact our personal peace and the well-being of our communities. Criticism and gossip can easily disrupt the harmony of any group, creating divisions and breeding mistrust. These actions, however, offer us a mirror to reflect on the importance of right speech, a concept deeply embedded in Buddhist teachings. Right speech encourages us to speak truthfully, kindly, and constructively, fostering a positive environment for everyone. To step away from participating in harmful gossip and criticism, it's essential to first recognize it. This awareness allows us to consciously choose not to contribute to the spread of negativity. Instead, we can aim to be sources of positivity, using our words to uplift and support those around us. This shift doesn't require confrontation, but rather a gentle steering of conversations towards more constructive topics. Empathy plays a crucial role in understanding why people might engage in gossip. Often, it's a reflection of their own insecurities or a desire to feel connected to others. By approaching such individuals with empathy, we can better navigate these interactions, providing support that might help them move away from gossip. Redirecting conversations isn't just about avoiding negativity, it's about creating a space where positive, meaningful exchanges can occur. This can be achieved by focusing discussions on ideas, events, and constructive feedback, rather than on individuals not present to share their side of the story. The transformative effect of positive speech is profound. It can strengthen relationships, build trust, and encourage a culture of openness and honesty. Stories abound of groups and communities that have shifted from a focus on criticism to one of support and growth, illustrating the power of positive communication. In our practice of mindfulness, we can cultivate an awareness of our speech patterns, choosing words that reflect kindness and compassion. This doesn't mean avoiding difficult conversations, but rather engaging in them with a spirit of constructive intent, aiming for understanding rather than division. Forgiveness plays a significant role in healing from the impact of gossip. Holding on to resentment ties us to the negative experiences of the past. By forgiving those who have engaged in gossip, we free ourselves from these bonds, allowing us to move forward with a lighter heart. The practice of forgiveness and positive speech fosters a community that uplifts its members, providing a supportive environment for personal and collective growth. In such a community, individuals feel empowered to share their authentic selves, 
knowing they will be met with understanding and support. By embodying the principles of right speech, empathy, and forgiveness, we can transform our interactions, creating spaces where meaningful connections flourish. This journey towards positive communication invites us to reflect on the impact of our words and to choose paths that lead to harmony and mutual respect. In conclusion, navigating the challenges presented by gossip mongers invites us to apply the wisdom of right speech, transforming our social landscapes into nurturing environments. Through mindfulness, empathy, and a commitment to positive communication, we can build communities that resonate with support, understanding, and growth. This narrative doesn't just guide us in handling criticism and gossip, it offers a blueprint for enriching our relationships and communities, marking a path of kindness and constructive engagement in our interactions. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 3. The Pretender in Conversations In our daily talks and meetings, we often meet people who don't quite show their real selves. They might hide behind a mask, trying to fit in or avoid being judged. This can make it hard for us to connect with them deeply. But understanding why they do this and learning how to encourage more open, real talks can help us all feel more connected and happy together. Sometimes people pretend because they're scared of being left out or criticized. It's like they're using an invisible shield to protect their true selves from getting hurt. Spotting this in conversations is the first step to breaking down walls and getting to the heart of genuine connections. It's about understanding the fears, hiding behind the pretending. The wisdom of being true to ourselves and others is ancient, but always relevant. Being authentic means more than just being honest. It's about being fully present in our interactions, making them richer and more meaningful. When we encourage everyone to be themselves fully, conversations become more genuine, leading to stronger bonds. Creating a space where everyone feels safe to be themselves is key. This means listening well and showing empathy, which can make others feel comfortable enough to drop their act and share their true thoughts and feelings. Knowing ourselves deeply is crucial in this process. By understanding our reasons for sometimes hiding our real selves, we can start to communicate more openly. This self-discovery journey is tough but very important for forming real connections. Believing in our own value helps a lot too. People often hide because they doubt their worth or ideas. When we feel confident about who we are, it's easier to share our true selves without fear of being judged. Pretending can keep us from truly connecting with others. By promoting honesty and openness, we can break these barriers, leading to friendships and relationships that are deep and real. Here are some ways to help make communication more open and honest. Practice listening well. Show that you care about how others feel and don't be afraid to share your own true thoughts and feelings. This not only helps others to be more real with you, but also deepens your connections. Practices like meditation and mindfulness can also guide us to be more comfortable with who we truly are. They help us look inside ourselves and accept what we find, laying the groundwork for honest interactions. Sharing stories of people living authentically can inspire us and others to drop our masks. Hearing about someone who overcame their fear of rejection to live more openly can encourage us to do the same. Building a community that values real, sincere interactions is so important. Such a community supports everyone in being their true selves, creating a place where real friendships can grow. By understanding the reasons behind why some people might not always show their true selves and encouraging a culture of openness, we're not just improving our own relationships, we're helping to create a world that's more connected and understanding. This push towards real talk and genuine interactions invites us to think about the importance of being our true selves and to aim for a kind of communication that makes everyone's life richer. Through understanding, caring, and the bravery to be ourselves, we can change our talks, creating spaces where true friendship thrives and everyone feels brave enough to be exactly who they are. 4. Superficially Friendly In our daily lives, we often bump into people who are friendly, but sometimes that friendliness doesn't feel real deep down. 
it's like their smiles and chats don't quite reach their eyes. This kind of friendliness, while nice, leaves us wanting more meaningful connections, where conversations go beyond just talking about the weather or what we did over the weekend. Sometimes people act this way because they think it's what they're supposed to do to fit in or be liked. Other times, it's because they're not comfortable sharing their true selves, maybe out of fear of being judged. But, deep inside, we all crave real connections, those moments when we share a laugh that comes from the belly, or a chat that makes us see the world a bit differently. Buddhist teachings remind us how important it is to connect with others genuinely. These connections are built on being really present, not just physically, but with our whole being. When we truly listen and share openly, even about simple things, we create a bridge to deeper understanding and friendship. Encouraging realness starts with us. By showing empathy and taking a genuine interest in others, we invite them to drop their guard. Asking questions that need more than a yes or no answer and sharing a bit about our own struggles and joys can turn a small talk into a meaningful conversation. Being mindful or fully in the moment can help us sense when a chat feels shallow and guide it to more sincere topics. This doesn't mean forcing deep talks all the time. It's about finding little openings for more heartfelt exchanges. Every talk, even the ones that seem surface level, can teach us something. They're like stepping stones to getting to know someone better. Seeing the potential in all interactions for something deeper can change how we approach our conversations. Deep friendships take time to grow. Like a garden, they need care, patience, and the right conditions to thrive. Trust and shared experiences, bit by bit, reveal the layers of our hearts to each other. Practicing loving kindness, or metta, can warm up our hearts, making it easier to connect on a deeper level. This practice helps us approach each conversation with kindness, even if we're just asking someone how their day was. Living authentically, being true to ourselves, encourages others to do the same. When people see us being real, they feel more comfortable to let their true selves show too. This doesn't mean we won't ever meet someone who's just being polite, but it helps us to meet them with kindness and understanding. Having a group of friends or a community that values deep, sincere connections makes everyone feel safer to be themselves. In such an environment, it's easier for everyone to open up and share more of who they really are. By striving for genuine interactions, we're not just improving our own social lives. We're helping make the world a little more connected and understanding. It's about finding the realness in every chat, seeing past the surface to the shared human experiences beneath. So, as we go about our days, let's remember the power of real connection. It starts with us, listening a little deeper, sharing a little more, and showing kindness in every interaction. Through these small steps, we can build friendships that aren't just friendly, but truly meaningful. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 5. Empathy Lacking Individual In our walks of life, we often meet folks who find it tough to get where others are coming from emotionally. It's like they miss a beat in the rhythm of feelings that connect us all. This doesn't just make our chats with them feel a bit off. It also makes our world seem a little less warm. Understanding why this happens and how we can help bridge this emotional gap can make all our relationships smoother and more meaningful. Empathy, or feeling with someone, is the magic that makes our connections with others richer and more colorful. When it's missing, things can seem gray. People might struggle with empathy for all sorts of reasons, like their own past hurts, how they were brought up, or maybe they just never learned its true worth. This feeling with others is super important, not just for us one-on-one, -on -one, but for everyone together, making our communities kinder places. Spotting when someone finds empathy tricky can help us figure out how to help. Maybe they don't pick up on when someone is sad, or they might talk over someone's feelings without realizing. One big way to spread empathy is by showing it ourselves. When we listen well, really hear what someone is saying, 
and show we get their feelings, we light a little spark of empathy. This doesn't have to be grand gestures. Just being there, giving a supportive nod, or sharing a kind word can make a big difference. Trying to see the world through someone else's eyes, even when we don't quite get it at first, stretches our empathy muscles. It's like putting on a new pair of glasses and seeing a whole new perspective. This isn't always easy, but it's worth it for the deeper connections it can build. Making space for everyone to share openly, where no one is afraid of being judged, lets empathy bloom. In these spaces, people can talk about what they're feeling and know they're being understood. It's about creating a vibe where it's okay to be real, whether that's sharing joy, sadness, or anything in between. Sometimes gently guiding those who aren't so empathetic can open their eyes. Sharing stories of when empathy touched our lives or pointing out missed chances to connect on an emotional level can shine a light on its power. Practicing mindfulness helps us tune into our own feelings, which in turn makes us better at tuning into others. It's about being more aware of what stirs inside us so we can relate better to what stirs in others. This journey inward can show us just how rich and varied our emotional world is. Starting young by teaching kids about empathy lays a strong foundation for them to grow into caring adults. Kids learn empathy by seeing it in action through how we treat them and others. It's about nurturing a sense that everyone's feelings matter. Empathy can turn rough patches into smooth paths. Approaching disagreements with a mindset to understand rather than to win can lead to solutions that work for everyone. It's about finding that common ground, even in tough times. Communities that hold empathy high are like warm, welcoming homes where everyone feels part of something bigger. It's in these communities that we support each other through thick and thin. Building such a community starts with small steps from each of us, reaching out and trying to connect on a heart level, even when it's hard. Tackling the lack of empathy isn't just about making our one-on-one -on -one chats better. It's about weaving a tapestry of connection that covers all of us, making our world a softer, kinder place. It's a journey that asks us to look within and embrace the shared beats of our human hearts. With patience and an open mind, we can bridge the empathy gap, creating a space where everyone feels seen, heard, and valued. This isn't just about understanding others. It's about building a world where every person knows they matter. Six, constant irritator. In our lives, we all meet someone who seems to push our buttons just the right way, making us feel irritated more often than not. This person, without maybe even knowing it, can test our patience every day. It's important to understand that dealing with such individuals offers us a unique chance to grow, not just in patience, but in empathy and communication too. Firstly, recognizing the strain constant irritation can put on our relationships is crucial. It's not just about getting annoyed, it's about how this feeling can create distance between us and the person irritating us. Sometimes the reasons behind their behavior could be stress, personal challenges, or simply not realizing how they come across. Understanding this can change how we see the situation, shifting from annoyance to compassion. Reflecting on why we react the way we do can also be enlightening. Maybe it's not entirely about them, but also about how we're feeling at the moment. If we're stressed or tired, we might be less patient. Knowing this can help us respond more calmly, choosing to address the issue with a clear head rather than out of frustration. Communicating our feelings and setting boundaries doesn't mean starting an argument. It's about expressing ourselves calmly and clearly letting them know how certain behaviors affect us. This is where empathy comes in handy. Trying to see things from their perspective might reveal why they act the way they do, helping us find a more understanding approach to address the irritation. Setting boundaries with kindness is also key. It shows respect for both our well-being and theirs, making it clear what behaviors we can and cannot tolerate. This doesn't have to be confrontational, it's simply about respecting each other's space and feelings. 
Finding common ground can sometimes turn the situation around. Maybe there's a shared interest or solution that can make interactions more positive for both parties. It's about looking for ways to connect on a different level, reducing the chances of irritation. Patience plays a big part in this process. Change doesn't happen overnight, and expecting immediate results can lead to disappointment. It's a gradual journey, requiring persistence and understanding from both sides. Supporting each other through this process can significantly improve the relationship, making it stronger and more resilient. Creating a supportive environment where everyone feels heard and respected can transform irritating interactions into opportunities for personal growth and deeper connections. It's about nurturing an atmosphere of kindness and understanding, where everyone can learn from each other and grow together. By approaching situations with empathy, clear communication, and patience, we can navigate the challenges of dealing with someone who constantly irritates us, turning potential conflicts into opportunities for strengthening our relationships. It's a journey of understanding, not just for the person who's irritating us, but for ourselves as well, as we learn to respond with compassion and wisdom. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 7. Perpetual Problem Facer In our lives, we often come across friends or family members who seem to always be dealing with one problem after another. They might feel like they're stuck in a never-ending loop of challenges. Understanding how to be there for them, while making sure we're not overwhelmed, can really strengthen our relationships and spread kindness in our community. Buddhism teaches us about dukkha, which means suffering or dissatisfaction. This concept reminds us that facing problems is a common part of life for everyone. When we remember this, we can approach those who always seem to be struggling with a kind and patient heart. It's important to realize that the reasons behind their constant struggles could be many. From their outlook on life to experiences they've had in the past that make it hard for them to see the light at times. Being compassionate doesn't just mean trying to fix their problems. It's about really listening to them and letting them know it's okay to feel upset or troubled. This helps them feel understood and supported, which is sometimes all they need to start feeling a bit better. We don't always have to agree with everything they say, but acknowledging their feelings is a powerful way to show we care. We can also gently encourage them to see things from a different perspective, reminding them that nothing lasts forever, not even tough times. Talking about the good moments they've had or strengths they've shown in the past can inspire hope and remind them of their ability to get through tough spots. Helping them think of ways to solve their problems can empower them. Instead of taking over and trying to solve everything for them, we can brainstorm solutions together. This helps them build the skills and confidence to handle future challenges on their own. Remember, change takes time and being patient is key. It's also crucial to take care of ourselves. Helping others shouldn't drain us. Setting clear boundaries and practicing self-care makes sure we can be there for them without feeling worn out. Finding the right balance is important to keep the friendship healthy and strong. Introducing them to mindfulness can make a big difference too. Being mindful helps us all focus on the present instead of getting caught up in past troubles or worrying too much about what the future holds. Simple mindfulness exercises can bring a sense of calm and clarity, encouraging them to lean on a wider circle of support like other friends, family, or even professionals can lighten the load. It's a reminder that they're not alone and there are many people who care and want to help. Practicing gratitude together can shift focus from what's going wrong to the good things in life, no matter how small. This shift in focus can brighten their outlook on life and help them see the positive side more often. Celebrating even their smallest wins can boost their spirits. Acknowledging their efforts and progress shows them that they're moving forward, even if it's just a little at a time. Lastly, creating a supportive community around them where they feel accepted and understood can significantly improve their ability to face and overcome challenges. 
being part of a caring community gives them strength and a sense of belonging. By embracing these approaches, we do more than just help our friends or family members who are constantly facing problems. We also create a kinder, more understanding world around us. This support not only strengthens our relationships, but also helps us all feel more connected and resilient in the face of life's ups and downs. 8. Two-Faced Gossiper Handling someone who often gossips and shows different faces to different people is a bit like walking on a tightrope. It needs balance, patience, and a good bit of understanding. Gossip can stir up trouble and break trust, but dealing with it wisely can help keep peace and even improve relationships. Gossipers sometimes share stories that aren't theirs to tell, leading to hurt feelings and trust issues. They might do this for various reasons, like wanting to feel part of a group or trying to hide their own insecurities. Understanding these reasons can help us figure out the best way to respond. Being empathetic towards a person who gossips means trying to see things from their perspective, even if we don't agree with their actions. This doesn't mean we let harmful behavior slide. Instead, we try to understand the why behind their actions, which can help in finding solutions. Talking to the gossiper about the impact of their words might open their eyes to the consequences of their actions. It's important to have this chat in a calm and friendly way, aiming to solve the issue together rather than placing blame. Setting clear boundaries is crucial. Letting them know what kind of talk makes you uncomfortable helps protect you from becoming part of the gossip circle. This also shows them a better way to communicate. Encouraging positive talk can make a big difference. Praising the gossiper when they share good news or speak kindly of others can show them the value of positive chatter, hopefully steering them away from gossip. Supporting those hurt by gossip helps heal the community. Showing you care and are willing to listen can lessen the sting of rumors and show that not everyone supports gossip. Creating a space where open, honest talk is valued makes it harder for gossip to thrive. This means encouraging everyone to talk directly to each other about concerns rather than behind each other's backs. Practicing mindfulness or being fully in the moment can help reduce gossip. It teaches us to focus on our actions and words, leading to more thoughtful and kind interactions. Teaching about the effects of gossip and how to communicate with kindness can change how we all see and engage in gossip. Workshops or discussions on these topics can benefit everyone, showing better ways to relate to each other. Leading by example is powerful. When we choose not to join in on gossip and instead treat everyone with respect, it sets a positive standard for others to follow. It shows that it's possible to build relationships based on trust and kindness, not rumors. By tackling the issue of gossip with understanding, communication, and positive action, we not only solve the immediate problem, but also help create a stronger, more trusting community. This approach can transform challenging situations into opportunities for growth and deeper connections. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 9. Toxic Individual Dealing with a toxic individual can be one of the most challenging aspects of navigating social circles or workplace environments. Such individuals often drain energy, spread negativity, and can significantly impact our mental well-being. Addressing this issue while maintaining compassion and understanding is crucial for preserving our peace and fostering healthier relationships. Understanding the characteristics of toxic behavior is the first step. These behaviors can include constant negativity, manipulation, lack of empathy, and the tendency to create drama or conflict. Recognizing these traits helps us to identify the behaviors without labeling the person, which is essential for addressing the issue with kindness and understanding. The reasons behind toxic behavior are varied and often complex. They might stem from personal insecurities, past traumas, or a lack of emotional intelligence. Approaching these individuals with empathy 
allows us to see beyond their actions and understand the hurt or fear driving their behavior. This doesn't excuse harmful actions, but provides a foundation for addressing the issue from a place of compassion. Communicating effectively with someone displaying toxic behavior is challenging but necessary. It's important to express how their actions affect us without resorting to blame. This can be done by focusing on specific behaviors and their impacts using I feel statements to convey our feelings without accusing or escalating tensions. Setting boundaries is crucial for our mental and emotional health. We need to clearly define what behavior we will not tolerate and stick to these boundaries firmly. This sends a clear message about our expectations for respectful treatment and protects us from being repeatedly harmed by toxic behaviors. Encouraging positive interactions and reinforcing non-toxic behavior. When it occurs can sometimes influence change. Highlighting moments of kindness, empathy, or constructive communication can serve as positive reinforcement, showing the individual that respectful behavior fosters better connections. Supporting those affected by toxic behavior, including ourselves, is essential for healing. Seeking support from friends, family, or professionals can provide the strength and perspective needed to deal with challenging individuals effectively. Fostering a culture of open and honest communication in our communities and workplaces can help mitigate the impact of toxic behavior. When everyone commits to respectful and empathetic interaction, it becomes harder for toxicity to thrive. Mindfulness and self-care practices can fortify us against the effects of dealing with toxic individuals. By maintaining our inner peace and well-being, we can approach challenging situations with a clearer mind and a more balanced perspective. Educating ourselves and others about the impact of toxic behavior and the importance of emotional intelligence can shift societal norms. Workshops, articles, or discussions on these topics can raise awareness and promote healthier ways of interacting. Lastly, leading by example is a powerful tool for inspiring change. By embodying the qualities of kindness, respect, and understanding in our interactions, we set a standard for others to follow. This not only helps to counteract toxicity, but also contributes to a more compassionate and supportive community. Navigating the challenges posed by toxic individuals requires patience, resilience, and a commitment to personal growth and well-being. By adopting a compassionate and proactive approach, we can protect our mental health, foster healthier relationships, and contribute to creating a more positive and supportive environment for everyone. 10. Empathy Lacking Individual – Revised for Uniqueness Dealing with someone who finds it tough to understand or feel what others are going through can be tricky. This fresh look at someone who might not show much empathy is all about finding new ways to connect and understand each other better. We'll talk about this in a simple, clear way, aiming to make things better for everyone involved. Empathy or feeling with someone makes our friendships deeper and our family ties stronger. But when someone doesn't easily pick up on or share feelings, it might leave us scratching our heads. This could be because of how they grew up, things they've gone through, or just how they naturally are. Knowing this helps us to be more patient and kind. People who don't show empathy might not catch on to how others feel or know how to respond. It's not that they don't care. They might just find it hard to understand emotions the way others do. Understanding this can help us be more patient and keep trying to connect. Talking openly about our feelings can help bridge the gap. We can explain how certain things make us feel without expecting them to get it right away. It's like showing them a new color they've never seen before. It takes time for them to see it. Setting boundaries is also super important. We need to look after our own feelings too. Telling them what's okay and what's not in a gentle way helps make our time together better and keeps us from feeling upset or drained. Noticing and talking about the times they do show kindness or thoughtfulness can encourage more of it. Like when they do something nice or say something supportive, letting them know it meant a lot can inspire them to keep it up. 
Having friends or family who understand what we're going through is a big help too. They can offer advice or just listen, which can make a big difference when we're trying to navigate these tricky waters. Getting involved in group activities can also light a spark of empathy. Doing things together like volunteering or team sports can help them see and feel the power of working and being together, which can warm up their understanding of others. Being patient is key. Growing empathy in someone isn't quick or easy, but noticing and celebrating even the small steps forward can keep us going and hopeful. Trying out mindfulness or meditation together might also help. These practices encourage us to look inside ourselves, which can lead to a better understanding of our own and others' feelings. Leading by example is one of the best ways to inspire change. Showing empathy in how we treat them and others sets a living example of how powerful and healing empathy can be. This new approach to understanding and interacting with someone who might not be very empathetic is all about patience, clear communication, and a little creativity. By working together, sharing our feelings, and setting kind boundaries, we can help foster a more empathetic and caring environment for everyone. Conclusion Looking back on everything we've talked about, we've gone through a lot about how to deal with different kinds of people in tough situations. We've learned about folks who find it hard to understand others, people who spread rumors, and those who always seem to be in a bad mood. All these stories have shown us how to be better at getting along with everyone and making our little corner of the world a nicer place. One big thing we've seen is that everyone has their own struggles. Sometimes, when someone acts in a way that's hard to deal with, it's because they've got stuff going on that we might not know about. Keeping this in mind helps us to be kinder and more patient, talking things out, making sure we're clear about our own limits, and showing others how to be kind by doing it ourselves are some of the best tools we have. It's like being on a team where everyone plays a part in making things better. Being patient is super important too. Changing how we act or how we think about things doesn't happen overnight. When we notice even a tiny bit of progress, celebrating it can encourage us and the people around us to keep going. Having friends or family to talk to can make a huge difference as well. They're like our cheerleaders, helping us stay strong and keep trying, even when it's tough. We also talked about how doing things together as a group can help everyone get along better and understand each other more. It's all about sharing the good times and the hard times, which makes everyone feel more connected. And don't forget, every day is a chance to use what we've learned. Whether it's a tricky situation or a chance to make a friend feel better, we can make things a little better with kindness and understanding. To wrap it up, all these stories and tips point us to a simple truth. Being understanding and kind can help us get through pretty much anything with anyone. Let's keep that spirit alive in everything we do, making every chat and every meetup a step towards a friendlier, more caring world. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel.